Hello, everybody. How are you? ¿Cómo están? ¿Bien? ¿No? ¿Mal? Oh, <laughs> ni modo. Oh, well. Where can, we, where can I do? ¿Qué puedo hacer? Nada. Nothing. Gracias por ver mis videos. Thank you for watching my videos. I'm so happy you're learning Spanish. Spanish is so useful in the world. <laughs> See, a whole continent almost speaks Spanish. <laughs> See? You wonder, what should I speak Spanish? Should I learn uh, French or Spanish? It's like, yeah, well, maybe I go to Mon maybe I study two years French and I go to Montreal in France. <laughs> or maybe I speak Spanish and then I travel in a whole continent and cross the paddle and go to a country. Anyway, so let's start with my lesson. And my lesson today is chores around the house, but not really because it's verbs and things that you need to do those verbs and when are those actions being played on. So, for example, to sweep, to sweep you need a broom and to broom you need a floor etc. So we're going to learn all, all that world of chores around the house. So on the weekend, uh, maybe you won't camp, go camping, but you cannot go camping every weekend unless you're a real adventurer, because on the weekend you have to fold your clothes, wash your clothes, clean your house, wash your toilet, uh, wash your dishes, all the, shor all the shorts, <laughs> shorts chores around the house. So let's start because a lot of you say, oh, why do you take so long to introduce your lesson? You should go to the point. And so I get your point. I'm not going to talk so much. I already talked like two minutes, so I'm going to shut up. To sweep. To sweep is barrer. Barrer. Barrer termina en er. El, el, that's el infinitivo, the infinitive, the base form of the verb. Your base form in English is to sweep, to mop, to vacuum, to, 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 and the verb, right? So that's the action. That's the action. What do you do? You sweep, okay? Barrer. Yo barro el piso cada fin de semana. Every weekend, I sweep the floor. What do you need to sweep? Well, you need your hands. I <laughs> know. You need a broom. A broom, and then you can go and travel around. So you get on the broom and go around the world. Escoba, a broom, escoba, escoba. There are different types of escobas, ones that are, have like short hairs, ones that have long hairs, and ones that have super long hair. So according to my mother, the ones that have the longest hairs are for the patio, where like the leaves and everything can go easily, and the, the short hairs are for the inside house. Escoba. Now, you need a floor to sweep. Un piso. El piso. The floor. El piso. You can say el baño or any part of your house. El baño, la sala, the living room, el comedor, the dining room, etc. El patio. The patio. El patio. To mop. To mop. Oh, I don't like mopping. And the worst is that in Mexico, we don't have, I mean, in most places, we don't have those fancy machines you have for like, like automatic squeezing of the mop. So you actually have to go and go like, and squeeze it with your hands with all the dirt. And it, sometimes you're not wearing gloves, guantes. So it's very entertaining. <laughs> That's why probably you get sick. Oh, to mop, trapear, trapear. Oh. And they are so heavy. Trapear. And then if you didn't wash it well, then the floor is all like, oh, it doesn't look clean. It looks like I just put a dirty mop on top of the floor. So then I gotta do it again. Trapear. What do you need to, for trapear? Trapear es la acción, el verbo. El verbo es la acción. ¿Qué necesitas para trapear? El trapeador, <laughs> el trapeador. I have a friend that in, in Mexico, they also call it mechudo, but mechudo is only what, the ones that have the hairs, but they are different types. So the standard is trapeador. Trapeador, you also need a 
el piso, right? The floor. You need floor. You need tiles. Say azulejo. Tiles. Azulejo. Azulejo. You can say mm, the concreto, like concrete, whatever the, the floor is made of. To vacuum. Vacuum. I like vacuum. Maybe because I don't get to vacuum. Because imagine I live in a very dusty Mexican town. So imagine I have carpet. <laughs> That would be fun. If some people have carpet, I eh? don't think anyway. Mm, sorry. To vacuum. Aspirar. 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 Like all that. Now, somebody told me that now there's these robot vacuums that they do it. But I actually, I would like to vacuum. But I don't have a carpet. I wouldn't buy that robot one. I would do it myself. Aspirar. And you need aspiradora. The machine is la aspiradora. And what do you need? Because you cannot really, can you vacuum the regular floor? Maybe, maybe you can vacuum the regular floor. But I think they were invented because of the carpets. So, alfombra. Alfombra is the carpet. Alfombra. Oh, um, tapete is like the piece of, um, tapete, tapete, um, tapete, tapete. It's a funny word. Tapete is the, uh, just the piece of carpet, you know? One that is not, doesn't occupy the whole house, but only maybe in your living room or in your dining room. You have a, oh, I forgot the name in English. Uh, I'll remember, and it's called, it's called rug, 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 like rug, rug, mm -hmm. rug, tapete. Now, alfombra, many, many uh, words in Spanish come from Arabic. I have problems pronouncing Arabic. So, Arabic. Uh, a lot of words that start with A-L. A, a -L, al, alfombra, Aladdin, no, alfombra, uh, alcoba, like the terrace. A lot of words that have to do with luxury come from Arabic in Spanish. In fact, I think there are like around 4,000 words and they all start with A-L. Oh. Something interesting to know. Alfombra o tapete, the rug, okay? The rug. To dust, desempolvar, desempolvar. When you take, for example, my whiteboard cleaning cloth, sometimes it gets dusty. Mucho polvo. So I do this, and now it's clean. Well, I also have to wash it. <laughs> so, mi trapo o paño desempolvar, but I can use this to dust my house. And I dust the bookshelf, the table, all the dusty little corners. To dust is desempolvar, and you need a trapo, and some people also call it paño, trapo o paño, whatever you want. Both are good. Paño o trapo. Muy bien. Is that too small? P-A-N-Y-O. N with a hat. N with, with a hat. That's the N. -ye. What do you need to dust? Oh, well, you can dust everything. But something you really need to dust is los muebles, the furniture. Now, the furniture in, in, uh, in English, it's, a, it's kind of a general noun, the furniture. You cannot say, I got a... Uh, a furniture, no. You need maybe a piece of furniture, maybe a couch, maybe something. But in Spanish, actually we do. We say los muebles, it's a plural. The furniture. La mesa, el colchón, la cama, etc. O el mueble, that means one. El mueble o los muebles. Of course, you can call it by the name. You can say la sala the living room, el comedor, the dining room, la estufa, the stove, etc. But if you want to say the furniture, say los, los muebles. We make it plural, plural. To water, regar, my favorite, regar, regar las plantas, to water the plants. Very important, otherwise the plants die. But they say in California, you cannot really waste water because you guys don't have water. But in Mexico, we don't have water either. Uh, some days we don't have water. 
So then you just don't water the plants, that's it. But maybe you in California have other problems. Mm. But I like to water the plants. Regar, yo riego las plantas, poquitas. Just some of them. Manguera, you need a manguera, the hose. The hose, it's like the long hose that you need. La manguera. Me gustan esas mangueras que se hacen chiquitas. I like those hoses that squeeze, that you take them out and they, it's like a super funny, like how they get so short and then you pull them and they get so long. I want one of those. I really like them. And it's easy, easy right? Because otherwise when you are actually putting it away, I have to go like, oh, like one hour just doing that. Useless, waste of time. Las plantas. El pasto, the grass, the lawn, the grass, el pasto, o el césped, el césped, el césped, I find it like the césped is a bit like, oh, pop off, you know, the pop off words, like, el césped, o sea, que onda, like, you're very strawberry or something, like, mi casa tiene un césped muy grande, like, people who speak like that in Spanish, el pasto, the normal way to say it, the lawn, the grass, el pasto, and you need, uh, to clean, it's a very general verb, limpiar, but it's so useful because really all these can be used as limpiar. <laughs> Yo limpio el piso, I clean the floor instead of uh, I mop the floor or I, I vacuum the floor, whatever it is, you can just say limpiar for everything, right? Limpiar la casa in general, to clean the house, etc. Limpiar, to clean. And for limpiar, you need a paño or a trapo, como mi borrador, trapo, paño. But tablecloth, tablecloth is mantel, 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 tablecloth. But pero paño y trapo is like to clean. But to clean, you really need all these machines <laughs> I've been talking about. Now, let's go to the next one. Oh, I got too close to the board. <laughs> let's go to the board. To fold, to fold this. La, la, la. See, I folded it. See, I'm gonna fold it again. To fold this, dun, 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 dun. I folded it. Yeah, to fold, doblar, doblar. Yo doble el trapo so it looks pretty, para que se vea bonito y organizado, organized. Doblar. And to fold, you need your hands because you don't need anything else. And you need some skills and ability, and that's about it. Necesitas habilidad para doblar. Now, you can, hands, yes. So, you can, oh. Okay, this was part of it, la mesa. <laughs> you can fold the clothes, la ropa, it's the clothes, la ropa, right? Whenever you take it out of the, uh, where you put it to dry, or in your case might be the dryer, then you have to fold it, otherwise it gets wrinkly, tiene arrugas, arrugas is wrinkles. You see, these ones are wrinkles too, arrugas. So this is wrinkly and this is wrinkles, arrugas y arrugas. Es como soy un trapo, tengo arrugas. Muy bien. Soy un trapo, tengo arrugas. Mi trapo también tiene arrugas. Soy, nada, ok. <laughs> I'm gonna start getting the mountain. Okay, la ropa, the clothes. Muy bien. Oh, to hang, to hang, to hang. It's, it could be, it has two meanings, two equivalents in Spanish. One is tender, which is that in your rope where you hang your clothes, you put it either like that if your place is not so windy, si no hay mucho viento, la doblas así, y el, el, the rope is in the middle, right? But if it's a very windy place, and they put some type of hangers like that, so it stays there. And some people have so much ability to hang their clothes in their rope, that actually they have this, ch ch they get it into the, the, the rope perfectly, and it doesn't go away. Otherwise, you have to go to the neighbor. Vecina, can I come and pick up my, uh, my clothes that was thrown in your lawn because of the wind, and then you go and pick up your clothes. Muy bien. Maybe there's a dog there, so it's dirty again, so then you have to wash it again. Tienes que lavarla otra vez. Oh, that's too bad. It has happened. 
I know people who has done it. Colgar. Oh, yeah. Colgar. One thing is to hang your clothes in your pretty robe, in the fresh air, in the beauty of the place where you live, in the natural environment where you live. And the other is to hang your clothes in your closet. So you put, you open your closet and you hang your clothes with those hangers, international hangers, I think. I don't know. Maybe in some other parts of the world they use other things. It, it could be because I, I think we are quite behind in terms of hangers and toilets. But anyway, so you put your clothes in the hanger. So oh, so pretty and organized. My skirts and my dresses and my, like if you're a man, your pants and your suits and your sneak and on the sneakers you don't hang. Oh, that's that's an idiom. To hang the sneakers is to die. Anyway, uh, colgar. Colgar los tenis, to hang the sneakers, it's to die. Uh, so when they say, oh, he hung the sneakers, I mean, he died. It's not, nothing really nice to teach you today. I'm a bit dark today. Anyway, colgar. You need ganchos, hangers, ganchos, los ganchos. And what do you hang? La ropa, the clothes. Las camisas, especially the, the uh, dress shirts, right? Because otherwise get wrinkled. You cannot really fold them. I mean, I don't know. I'd never have to do that. So las camisas, the... Um, so like, yeah, yeah, I have, I have two white um, kind of dress shirts, so I have to hang them, otherwise they get wrinkly. And I don't like to, I don't like to iron. To mow, cortar. To mow is cortar el, 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 el pasto or el césped. Uh -huh. To mow. And uh, some people say segar. Segar is also useful, but we say mostly cortar. Podar is to trim the trees, podar, to trim the trees. You know, I've, I've heard that in England, they, they trim the trees in such nice ways, such as a dog or a whale or a ship. They, uh, they have so many ways to uh, trim a tree because they like the shapes of the tree. So uh, in Mexico, they just cut them. <laughs> they just, oh, it's a tree, it's gonna, it's gonna ruin my house. I'm gonna cut it, cut it, right? No, 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 the roots are gonna destroy my house, cut it. So it's pure, beautiful, environmentally friendly concrete. Muy bien. Uh, so you, you mow, you, no, you trim the trees. Podas los árboles, podar muy bonito. But I don't like to trim the trees. I like them to grow normally like big and with lots of birds but my sister Rosie she likes to trim her tree and poor tree like the 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 torso the, the main root is this big and the poor tree is looks like a rose just coming out of that big tree and she does that and I don't like it so I we we discuss that a lot anyway that's about my business these were the verbs that will help you learn in Spanish the chores around your house. It won't help you as I'm not going to be there to help you to do the chores of your house, but I will give you the tools and skills you need to talk about it. See, of course, these are not all. But in my other videos, I talk about more. As I, as, as I say, sometimes in one video, I cannot cover so much because you get bored and I have to keep you entertained. And sometimes I, um, I cannot do that. I fail to entertain you. But that's why I cut it in little pieces so then you can watch a video and then you can scratch your belly and then watch another video and then you can scratch your belly again and you get like a bit of entertainment. Very well then. Very well then, let's go and trim, let's go and see the trim trees in England. Is that right? Anyway, thank you for watching my video. I hope you like my video. Thank you for watching my channel. Um, I would like to uh, tell you that if you would like to donate, that would be great. Uh, your donations would allow me to keep making videos. And I have so many videos to make. Sometimes it's really hard to focus on one topic and not talk about the other topic and not talk about the other topic. So 
Sometimes it's hard, but thank you if you can donate. Now, the other thing I wanted to say, antes de irme, before I go, antes de irme, I want to invite you to go to my website, butterflyspanish.com, because in my website, you will have the chance to win. No, you can sign up to get my newsletter. And my newsletter is called Dimensiones. And it's called Dimensiones because I talk about many dimensions of the language of the Spanish. I talk about linguistic factors, about social factors, about political, about whatever that I think or I know it would be really good for you, either for learning, for like to be aware, or just to know. It's all always related to Spanish. It's never about me or about anything uh, personal. It's only a, another tool, a written tool, in a, another way to get to you and to improve, so you improve your Spanish or learn Spanish. Thank you for watching my video. Nos vemos pronto. Nos vemos la próxima semana. Sí, aquí en el mismo canal. Adiós.